so uh, well uh, the broad pricing strategies is, is something which which we have we have listed out here so it's a long list mm -hmm. but then we'll take up some of it because you know some of it are actually derived from from the earlier uh, discussions that we have mm -hmm. some of it are new mm -hmm. so we will we will go through that quickly now uh, very uh, interesting kind of a pricing model is market skimming pricing mm -hmm. basically uh, this is for high price low volume Hmm. When is this important? Uh, this requires complete information of demand. That is, remember our definition of demand, ability and willingness to pay. So I should know the ability to pay. And when I realize that my customer has the ability to pay and will really pay because the customer thinks that there is a utility that is derived by paying even higher price. I will skim the market. Hmm. Skim the word skim comes from milk, right? Milk, yeah. So yeah. The cream. You're taking you take you the cream from <laughs> the market. <laughs> and so uh, taking the cream. So yeah. assume, presumably in the customer segment, there is somebody who has got a lot of money. Yes. He's a cream. Yes. So somehow you want to take the cream from take the it. cream customer segment and yeah. So charge them much higher. Much amount. higher and then position in the market in such a way that, well, this product you is just a capture that. very premium product and there are people, there are people willing to pay willing for to it. Pay for yeah. We also sometimes, you know, uh, think of certain restaurants, for example. Right. Same food we might have in some other restaurant which might be, uh, you know, lesser <laughs> okay. in terms of the <laughs> spice. Right. Yeah. But then, then that ambience, yeah. the kind yeah. of, you know, expectations yeah. of going to that place. Hmm. Or it's not very crowded. We can sit and chat for some time. Okay. All these things. Okay. So these these kind of restaurants are positioned in in the market in such a way that they are going to skin this kind of customers. customers. Yeah. So that that's a very interesting kind of a model. Now this is suitable for products that have very short life, life cycle. cycle. You can't right. keep uh, you know skimming again <laughs> again a decade because then the customer will <laughs> okay, yeah, take, <laughs> take a to get that. <laughs> so mm. so so that is one. Second, there will also be competition. And uh, when when a, a potential entrant actually sees that there is this possibility of skimming, that potential entrant might also enter, perhaps at a lower price, hmm. undercut your kind of a, of a sales volumes. So you will be really in trouble in the long run. Yeah. So, so some of these uh, fashion brands and some, they do limited edition. Yeah. Is a limit the number. Yeah. So that is clearly a skimming. Strategy. Yes. Yes. There will be a thousand of these high value cars yeah. or a thousand of these yeah. clothing or whatever it is. Yeah. B branded but clothing. Boutique, boutique, boutique uh, stuff. Uh, yeah. Clothing and things of yeah. that sort. I, I want a I want a shirt which which is unique and others should not should be not have having it. that when I go to the <laughs> street kind yes, of a thing. Yeah. So th there will be highly priced the same cotton, comfortable same cotton. Same, yeah. uh, but yeah. then prices are very high very for high. certain reasons. Yeah. So that is one kind of a strategy. Second kind of a strategy is value pricing. Again, the here is, this is other spectrum. Other, other kind, yeah. Either here we also need uh, customer perception data very well, yeah. And um, price is charged according to this customer's perception of you know, value. This, uh, value, value for money product. Mm -hmm. We say mm -hmm. when we buy certain mm -hmm. things. So uh, perceived value has to be understood. Mm -hmm. So why are we emphasizing all these things? We are emphasizing all these things because each one of this model requires intensive data work. Hmm. Because you need to do surveys, you need to find out what is what is that the customer is thinking about the product, and then you set the price according to this perceived value. Hmm. Yeah, some are some are categorized as exclusive products, some are categorized as low value kind of a thing. So you you charge according to that, and you know get into that segment of the market, position yourself in that in that category. So that's that's another kind of a model that firms use. Third very interesting NFA model is what is known as a loss leader pricing. That is uh, below cost. Below cost. Yeah. And uh, large volumes I want. But if it's below cost, large volume means Tem temporarily I don't mind because more volume is more loss actually. <laughs> no, but I will I will get a customer base perhaps. Ah. So I will do it I in can, I can get, get a repeat. Uh, yeah. I, I, from the I will do it in period T and in, and in period T1, if I make sure that the customer is coming back to me, perhaps I will now slowly cool. start, start increasing the, this thing and yeah. So, it is a slightly long term strategy. Long -term strategy. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, this is typical in terms of supermarkets. Hmm. Yeah, in Diwali time, we see that selling sweets, 
is uh, is a strategy in both ways. One, just for the sheer volume of the sweets. Second, uh, if if you're a big supermarket and if you have a sweet counter outside, you are actually attracting customers. Ah. They do it. Clothing, they do that, right? Sales, they say, 50 percent. Yeah. There'll be four items or data, I will say. There'll be four or five items which will actually be on the 50 percent. Yeah, 50 percent. Once you go in there, you're going to buy something. Yeah. So, and, and then we find that new arrivals are there. New arrivals, there are no discounts. No discounts. So, <laughs> so, so, this is a very interesting kind of a strategy. Right. Because it is basically to attract people at your side. And then perhaps, so it's a two-period kind of a, of a strategy. Right. Okay. Then there is a psychological pricing. That is this another interesting kind of a thing. Again, to play on consumers' perception of value. Hmm. That is, uh, on this perception, I don't kind of listen. There is a threshold in terms of prices that right. the consumer sets in the mind. Cognitively, yeah. cognitively, can I understand? They will uh, arrive at that and keep yeah. that as a threshold. Oh, I don't want to pay more than hundred rupees for something. Okay. I decided like that. Yeah. So, if there is something like you know, uh, a typical uh, nine point nine nine price. It's as good as 10 rupees. Yeah. But consumer in his or her mind has already fixed this threshold more than 10 rupees I don't want to really pay. So actually the price could have been 10.99 mm. then it is 11. Yeah. But then I don't want to cross this 10. Yeah. So earlier data strategy yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. 19.95 or 20.95 <laughs> yeah. kind of a thing yeah. was precisely to have this kind of a psychological yeah. So, basically, this is um, charging according to what the consumers think should be the price. Right, right, right. Because when I keep this threshold in my mind, oh, it is not worth paying for a coffee more than this much. So, just below that. But again, the important thing is to understand consumers' minds, correct, here, correct, correct. which is very, very important. So, that is why at one level when we look at GB, the interesting thing is that Marketing and psychology are very much related. Related, related. Because people, I mean, it's very clear that people don't have the sense of numbers like we have in mathematics. Yeah. Right? Then 499, they may think of it like 400 or 300. If you ask what's the difference between 350 and 499, they may not think it. But we say 500 suddenly is a big number. It is a, it's an upper threshold in the world. 500 rupees. Suddenly you paid for it. That's right. Oh, that's so, too much. Uh, that is so kind of number sense. Yeah. So that is why this is called psychological pricing. kind of pricing. Right. Now, uh, then what is was going rate pricing? That is basically, you know, uh, there is a market rate which is set by the players in the market. And uh, I want to actually vary the price, but I am not. I am not, not going to vary the price because um, the rivals yeah, will, will immediately then dominate the market share. So, I am a price taker. I will just, you know, take what price, take, take what price that, that is there in the market. But in this kind of a pricing model, I need to constantly keep watch of what is my rival's price. Hmm. If the rival actually alters the price, perhaps it brings down the price, I should also immediately bring down. Hmm. Otherwise, I might be pushed down. So, here, uh, not only the demand factor, but also the rival's pricing and rival's kind of, you know, uh, interactions with, with you in terms of possible price cutting or price increases also need to be understood in this kind of a pricing strategy. Then, you know, tender pricing, this is common in, in certain kinds of uh, work and this is very, very uh, interesting. Purchases. Government purchases and some, some corporates also because um, even though we call it as tender pricing, the idea here is uh, to convey a perception that I may be low cost, but I am really delivering value to you. Hmm. So, in government, we know that uh, most of the tenders are, are for the lowest bidder. Yeah. Now, even with such a low bid, I will give you quality. There is no doubt about it and I can deliver quality at, at, this, that, price. at that price. That is something which you have to convey. Now, here actually uh, for tender pricing, one important aspect is what we in industrial organization, what we call as reputation is very important. Mm -hmm. So, when a new past, firm, past, 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 yeah, for example, you know, uh, builders sometimes, you know, we go by reputation, mm -hmm. whether this builder will be able to deliver quality stuff within 12 months at this price or not. Yeah. So, uh, in tender pricing, very important is reputation. And in, in basically in market mechanism, the reputation has an important role, but especially in, in this kind of, you know, 
your uh, ability to deliver is often gauged by the consumer in terms of your past track record. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so this so is they have a past track. They are not going to shortlist here. They only come to and it comes to bidding. Yeah, you have to first get into the shortlist. Short then only you can get to bidding yeah. stage. Yeah. So, so this here the entry barriers are quite high. Very high. Yeah. yeah. So that's why uh, the possibility of collusion is also high. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because there are only four or five four players, or five and they will actually decide. Usually okay. Known, they will be known to each other. This this time you go ahead. Mm -hmm. I am not bidding. <laughs> yeah. So if if there is a possibility of an information flow. Between, between the these players, players. Huh. then they will come to a collusive thing. Yeah. So, uh, one of the things that we always think about of auction markets is that it's quite efficient and you know it actually solves a, a lot of uh, inefficiencies, to solve a lot of inefficiencies of yeah. regular market mechanism. But if the possibility of collusion arises in such kind of a situation, then even this you know tender pricing will not be very uh, effective. Yeah. Now. Uh, then we have a very interesting strategy that is price discrimination. That is, uh, same commodity is offered to different people at different prices. Hmm. Classic case airline tickets. Yeah, yeah. It's the same airline, yeah. morning 9 30 flight. Yeah, even the same seat class with business, business, business economic class. Economic class. It so, for different prices. Prices. so you would have booked, yeah. when you booked, yeah. we would have booked a one week earlier. Mm -hmm. I booked in the last moment. Yeah. So, but last moment booking can also be good as well as as well as bad. In the last moment, there could be discounts. Yeah. Not in India, but in other yeah, countries, yeah. there are possibilities of discounts. Yeah. But uh, early booking might have might also have an advantage. Yeah. So, so discrimination. How you bundle? How you bundle hotel and all that? Yeah. Through travel agents. So the discrimination then is this is this kind of a, of a strategy where firms actually sell the same product at different to prices. different customers at different prices. Price. Mm -hmm. No, this is a very interesting kind of a strategy. Why? Because um, it depends on the, the customer one. I should know the customer because it's, it's based on an assumption that if a customer is coming in the last moment to book an airline ticket, that travel is urgent. No, you can't postpone that. That is why this person is traveling. So perhaps he, he or she is willing to pay a little more. That's the information that that is. Or business class travelers may want to cancel the ticket or change the ticket. So, so they need that feature. Yeah. So they're willing to pay. They're willing to pay more. Yeah. So, so understanding the customer's value again is very important to offer discrimination. Yeah. Second important condition for price discrimination to operate is that, well. Um, there should not be any possibility of resale of the product. Yeah. So, so suppose I buy at a low price and then I sell it to you at a slightly higher price but lower than the what the firm is actually charging, then price discrimination is not a successful thing. So, in all these markets where there is no possibility of resale only, we can actually have price discrimination. Then third important thing is that, well, um, it depends on the product to a great extent. Yeah, in uh, perishable commodities market, we find that price discrimination is often uh, resorted because they just want to sell it off towards the end because they know that it is perishable. But uh, the customer also might might wait and watch, wait and watch up to a point, and then after that there is a turning point in terms of the perishability of the commodity. So they will go just before that kind of a thing, and you know, buy it at a price which is lower than the morning price or whatever they, the uh, seller is quoting. So, price discrimination there is a very, very important and a very interesting kind of a strategy. Now, uh, this price discrimination allows us to have very different kinds of pricing models. For example, uh, peak load pricing hmm. is, is actually a variant of price discrimination. Hmm. Again, in terms of metro travel, no? hmm. morning uh, uh, 8 to 10 if you are commuting, if you do not have a season ticket or whatever it is, then if you are buying ticket from the counter, you will have to pay more. Mm -hmm. Because this 8 to 10, there is already a large number of office goers who are going and you know. So, if you are also going at that particular point in time, your travel is an, is an urgent work that you have to do and you are willing to pay more for that. So, so peak pricing, off peak pricing mm -hmm. is one kind of a, of a very interesting kind of a price discrimination model. Uh, and especially in electricity pricing and all peak pricing is, is utilities basically. Mm. 
Second kind of, of a derivative of this price discrimination model is uh, what we call as a, a kind of a uh, cross price subsidization. Mm -hmm. That is same service. I uh, as a service provider has some information that this person is willing to pay more. So I will charge this person more. But at the same time, I get another customer who is not willing to, who does not have the ability to pay more. So I might subsidize that customer. So the subsidy that I am giving to the customer 2 is actually recovered from customer 1. Electricity is like that. Electricity is like that, you know. So a number of services are like that. It's all variant of this price discrimination model. It's the same service that, that people are getting. In the trains also, I think they subsidize the people who travel in general class. General class. And what charge the people who are traveling in second, second AC, third AC kind of a thing. So, so price discrimination then, uh, yeah, it's a very, very interesting kind of a strategy. But the uh, important thing is that we need complete information on the ability as well as the willingness of the consumer to pay and then arrive at a price. Hmm. Two, there should not be a resale of the product hmm. by the person who has purchased. Hmm. Now, uh, that, that takes us to uh, another interesting kind of a, of a pricing model that is penetration pricing. We talk about Geo's example. So, you initially keep the price at very, very low and then you secure this high volumes. Yeah. So, so typically, typically in mass market, you know, uh, products, we find this. You keep it at very, very low, low prices and then, you know, large volumes. So typically Walmart kind of a strategy, all that comes under this kind of penetration pricing. Now, uh, here, um, it, it's, it's very useful when you launch a product. Because immediately, the consumer will make comparisons in mind. Hey, existing product, I'm paying this much. Here is this new one with all these kind of features at a lower price. <laughs> Something, yeah. Why not? Let's try this yeah. kind of a thing. And if you if you get the consumer to try it once at this low price, perhaps you might continue with that kind of a, of a product. Now, uh, firms use this to switch consumer loyalties. But we should also remember that consumer loyalties are not only a function of price, consumer loyalties are also a function of a lot of other features, product features and, uh, and, and that, that is something which is you know getting uh, exploited when they launch a, a, a new product through penetration pricing. So uh, another perspective on pricing is to see pricing from uh, cost recovery angle. That is, a firm would like to recover some cost fully and some cost at least partial, if not fully. And uh, pricing then is arrived in terms of how much you want to recover of what kind of cost. Now, in the long run, we know that if you cannot recover full cost, then you really cannot survive for a long time. Yeah. So, this cost plus pricing is an important kind of a model that is used where there is a markup over costs. So, what is this markup? So, I know my costs. Then I also need certain profits because I am not, I'm not in the market uh, to have philanthropy. So, uh, so the cost plus a factor. So, usually the customer is knows your costs already. So, there is some transparency that the customer has because they know your costs and then they know what you have added on to it. Yeah. But uh, uh, costs and approximation the customer will have mm. because the firm might use different strategies to minimize, minimize the cost. Uh, that might not be apparent to the uh, customer. customer okay. So, customer has some idea in terms of the cost and then you keep a markup over and above that cost and then you arrive at a pricing formula. That is called cost plus pricing. Cost plus pricing yeah. So, now, manufacturing services, this EMSs and so on, use cost plus. Mostly cost plus. Mostly price. cost plus. Even yeah. automotive, I think, yes. majority of the suppliers, yes. yeah. they work on cost yeah. plus model, right? Bulk of manufacturing uses cost plus. Manufacturing uses yeah. cost plus. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, when we look at this cost plus, then, you know, um, there is a question as to what cost do you want to cover in the first instance? Generally, firms cover uh, variable costs. Hmm. That is, um, Prices are ensured, are uh, said to ensure a coverage of variable costs 
and a contribution to the fixed cost. Mm, mm, mm. At least a portion of the fixed cost, if I can get. Mm. Over a longer period of time, then I will recover my full fixed cost. cost. Mm. But variable cost, I have to cover. Fully cover. Fully cover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, that is one kind of, of a cost plus pricing. So, there the cost is 100% variable cost, a fraction of the fixed cost, and then, then my markup. markup. Mm. That is a formula that firms use. And and, and then uh, that, 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 you know, depending on the product and the market in which I operate, I will arrive at the pricing strategy. There is also something called a target pricing. That is, um, I want this much of profits. I am already setting the objective of the firm as achieving this much of profits. This is a specific target in terms of profits. And to arrive at that, I need to have a pricing formula where uh, I might see cost variations might not be high first. Second, cost variations sometimes are out of the control of the firm. Mm. For example, energy prices and things of that sort. Mm. But markup is within the control of the firm. Mm. So you vary your markup in such a way that you reach your target in terms of profits. Example, uh, depending on the demand conditions, you actually might vary your markup. Mm. When the demand is very high, in certain products, markup will also be very high oh, okay. because they think that they can take maximum. Mm -hmm. But when the demand is skimming there, is skimming there. Mm -hmm. when the demand is actually low, mm -hmm. then you are sometimes little jittery because you, you, you are not sure what is going to happen in the next period. Mm -hmm. So you might actually cut your markup. Mm -hmm. So depending on that, you will actually achieve your targets using the you know target pricing model. Right. And um, most of this pricing models that also use marginal cost pricing. Mm. That is, we find that we know what is marginal cost and uh, marginal cost also allows us some flexibility because you can see variations in marginal cost because there is an incremental unit of output that is produced now and what is the cost of that? You equate that to the price and perhaps add some markup to that depending on the, mar uh, and the market conditions in which you are operating. So, for the firm, to arrive at marginal cost pricing is, is the most straightforward kind of a pricing formula. But uh, um, there is also the other thing that the firm wants to do that is full cost pricing. That is not only marginal cost, I want to cover the full costs that are incurred. Tot average total cost. Whatever average total cost. Okay. So, ah. absorption <laughs> cost pricing is called this kind of full cost pricing. That is some or most of the fixed costs also are covered then the variable costs are also covered. So, I am not looking at marginal cost, which is mostly in the short term function of the variable cost, but full cost is covered in this. Now, it also depends on the kind of, of, of a product that we are talking about. Um, when you have low sunk costs, see that is fixed cost is, is there, sunk a lot, yeah. mm. but a large portion of fixed cost is not sunk. Mm then perhaps you might go for absorption, absorption cost pricing. Correct. Yeah. Correct. But when your sunk costs are very high, mm. then you might actually would try to stagger it over a period of time. Mm. And you're going to be in the business for a long period of time mm. when the sunk cost is very high. You can't exit very fast. Correct. correct. Because there's no, re there's no yeah. exit value for that. There's price. no exit value. Yeah. So in certain markets like what we call as contestable markets, mm. where uh, the demand is there at a particular point in time, mm. people might enter and then they might use this kind of absorption full cost pricing and keep the markup also higher than this cost and sometimes they might exit. Hmm. So, eateries is, is some, some kind of a thing. Certain eateries we come, we see that they come and you know make a lot of uh, kind of an impact in the short run. But after some time you can they see that this is just, just vanishing <laughs> huh. because the sunk cost is very low for them. Hmm and they want to cover this full cost in their pricing strategy. So, uh, absorption cost pricing is the other, other kind of thing. Finally, related to this predatory pricing is what is known as destroyer pricing. That is, I have a threat of an entry and I can smell it that there is somebody who is trying to enter into the market. Immediately, I undercut my price. Keep it at the lowest possible point so that the new entrant will find it very difficult to survive post-entry. So, there are two, two decisions which an entrant would take. One, the decision to enter. Two, the decision to survive or, or how long will it take it 
take for me to survive in this market post entry. Now, uh, more or less if you have made up the decision to enter, you will enter as a new entrant. But with this destroyer pricing, what you are doing is that the time duration Excellent. You are actually the survival factor is actually very difficult. Mm. So they will try for some time and mm. finally they are forced to exit. Now this is a very interesting kind of a, of a strategy which has got implications in a lot of models of industrial organization. Mm. For example, there is a prey predator kind of a pricing. Mm. So uh, I'm, I'm a predator. I'm just waiting for the new firm to come. As soon as I get a signal that the new firm comes, I will just cut, cut my price, price, keep it very low. And still, if this this new firm is actually entering into the market, I will again cut. <laughs> I'll make it very difficult. And at an appropriate point, I will just pounce onto the new firm. I'll acquire that mm. through a merger or takeover. Mm. And then I will increase over. Now I am the monopolist. I'll increase the prices. So a lot of models of industrial organization use this kind of, of pricing strategy. So, um, yeah. So we, we have now seen a, a lot of uh, models in terms of, of, of pricing. But... Uh, Three things we need to keep in mind. One, we need to have, a, have an idea of demand. We need to have an idea of the uh, perception of the product by the consumer mm. to arrive at an appropriate pricing strategy. Two, we need to have a, a full information about the costs because based on the cost, you arrive at a pricing strategy. And three, we also need to have information about our rival's strategy in terms of pricing. Depending on all this information, we will arrive at an appropriate pricing strategy.